Hi, my name is Nim and I work in the Practice Standards team here at the RCBS. In this video guide, I will talk you through the steps that you need to complete on Stanley in the pre-inspection stage of an initial routine or upgrade accreditation assessment. These include selecting your species and accreditation, accepting your assessor and confirming requirements and uploading the documents. You can watch this video in full if you have not completed any of these steps or you can skip to the relevant sections by using the marker tool below. Now, it's over to Megan to talk us through the first step in the process, selecting the species and accreditations that you wish to achieve at the assessment. Take it away, Megan. You will receive a notification on your Stanley dashboard prompting you to select your species and accreditation. Click on the arrow in the notification. Read the instructions in the Actions to Take box and then click on the blue arrow to jump to the Species and Accreditation section. You can also find this by scrolling down the page. Review the list of species types that your practice could be assessed for, along with the accreditation levels that you could achieve for each. Select an accreditation level for each species type treated at your premises. Remember, your premises must be assessed for all species types that are treated. Emergency Service Clinic is a separate accreditation that can only be achieved by small animal practices. It recognises small animal practices that can deal with emergency and critical care cases without an appointment. To achieve this accreditation, you must meet the core and general practice requirements in all modules of the small animal standards, as well as the Emergency Service Clinic requirements in the Emergency and Critical Care module, Module 6. Select not treated at premises if a species type is not treated. Do not leave any species type blank. For some accreditation levels, you are required to answer questions about your premises to determine if certain standards apply. Select yes or no to answer these questions. Click save species and accreditation selection to save your selection. If your practice is currently accredited and has previously been set up on Stanley, then the options in the Species and Accreditation section will be pre-selected based on your current accreditation. Save the selection if you wish to remain at the same level, or to achieve a higher or lower accreditation, amend the selection before saving. Don't forget, if your practice group has multiple premises, you must ensure that you have selected the Species and Accreditation for each premises to avoid delays in arranging your assessment. Use the Practice Structure or Quick Change Premises features to access the Stanley areas for your other premises. Once you have selected your species and accreditation, a new tab called Accreditation will appear within the assessment event. This is where you will need to work through the scheme requirements and upload documents in advance of your assessment. We will now assign an assessor to carry out your assessment. This process may take a few weeks, depending on when you select your species and accreditation. You will receive a notification on your dashboard once an assessor has been assigned, as well as an email to the address you have supplied. Thanks Megan. Once an assessor has been assigned, you will need to confirm that you are happy for them to carry out your assessment. You can also now start preparing for your assessment by confirming requirements and uploading the pre-assessment documents. Please jump to step 3 of this video if you'd like to learn how to do this. But for now, let's see how to accept your assessor and arrange your date. Back to Megan. You will receive a notification on your Stanley dashboard informing you that we have assigned an assessor to your assessment event. Click on the arrow in the notification. Read the instructions in the Actions to Take box, then click on the blue arrow to jump to the assessor section. You can also find this by scrolling down the page. Find out more about your assessor by reading their details and declaration of interest. You will now need to decide whether to accept or reject your assessor based on this information. If you have concerns about your assessor, please contact us to discuss these before rejecting them on Stanley. If you do reject the assessor, please add a comment clearly outlining your reasoning so that we can consider this when allocating another assessor for you. 
If you do not have any concerns about your assessor, click Approve Assessor. Write a comment in the text box if you wish to add a note for the assessor, then click to confirm your approval of the assessor. The assessor will show as approved in your assessment event. They can now contact you to arrange a date for your assessment. If your practice group has multiple premises, we will assign the same assessor for each one. You will need to check that you have accepted the assessor in the assessment events for each premises. Use the practice structure or quick change premises features to access the Stanley areas for your other premises. Your assessor will usually contact you initially by telephone to arrange your assessment date, but they may also send you an email or a Stanley message. They will also set a deadline by which the pre-assessment documents should be uploaded to Stanley. This is usually one month before the assessment date. We will input these dates into Stanley once they have been confirmed. Thanks Megan. So, to view your assessment dates in the dates section of your assessment event, click on the PSS events tab. Click on the event heading or the eye symbol to the enter into the event. Then scroll down to the date section at the bottom of the page. You will now need to continue preparing for your assessment by confirming your requirements and uploading your pre-assessment documents. This step of the pre-inspection stage involves confirming the mandatory requirements and uploading your documents so that they can be reviewed by your assessor before your assessment. The deadline for uploading your documents is usually one month before the assessment date, but your assessor will confirm this with you when you are arranging the assessment date. Once your deadline date has been set, you will be able to see it in the date section at the bottom of the Setup and Progress tab. Before starting to upload your documents, remember to make sure you have your digital versions of each document saved on your computer ready to go. There is a size limit of about 5 megabytes for each file that can be uploaded. This should be enough for the documents that you are required to upload. You will need to reduce the size of any files that are larger than this, or alternatively you could split them into multiple files to be uploaded separately. Please also make sure you have redacted any personal or sensitive information from the documents that you are uploading, so as to not infringe on sensitive data rules. You will need to upload your documents in the Accreditation tab within your assessment event. The tab provides an overview of the practice standards modules and requirements that you will need to meet for the species and accreditation that you selected. Click on a module heading to expand it and view the corresponding accreditation levels. Then click on an accreditation level heading to expand it and view the corresponding requirements. The single page symbol next to a requirement indicates that you will need to upload a document here and the number tells you how many documents are required. Click on the text of a requirement to expand it. The required document section lists the documents that you need to upload. Before you can upload a document, make sure you have confirmed that you are practicing the requirement at your premises. You can also confirm requirements as practice even if a document is not required in order to carry out a self-assessment of your practice. To confirm a requirement as practiced, go to the Confirm section. Add any notes for your reference about how you are meeting the requirement or just click Confirm as practiced. A yellow box with a tick will then appear to the right hand side of the requirement once this has been done. A section called Attached Files will also appear once the requirement has been confirmed as practiced. Click on the heading to expand this section. The table will list any documents that you have already uploaded for this requirement. To attach a file, click on the Attach File heading to open this section. The File Requirements Information section provides details of the accepted file types. Find the relevant file on your computer. Click within the rectangular box to search for the file on your computer, then double click on it to attach it. So, have you got all that? We're nearly there. Maybe it's time to pause the video and grab a cup of tea. Then we can start the next section. Mm -hmm. 
Right, so now we're going to see how to attach existing files. As well as uploading new files, you can also attach a file that you have already uploaded to another requirement in the accreditation tab. Files that have already been uploaded are shown in the Attach Existing File to this Requirement section, below the drag and drop box. Click on the bullseye symbol next to a file to attach it to the current requirement. If there are multiple premises in your practice group and a document also applies to another of the premises, you will only need to upload it once to the relevant requirement for the main premises. Your assessor will simply assume that the document applies to all the other premises. Likewise, if multiple species are treated at an individual premises and a document applies to all species, you will only need to upload it once to the requirement for the main species type. Files that you have attached to a requirement are listed in the Attached Files section. You can edit the details of an attached file by clicking on the pencil symbol, which is on the right hand side. Here, you can add a description if you'd like to. You can also add an expiry date, as well as replace the file with another one. You can also select to share a file with other premises in your practice structure, but only if it's relevant to them. Please do not select to share a file if your practice is part of a large practice structure, such as a corporate group. If you do, the file will be shared with all the premises within that structure not just those in your immediate practice group. The file is unlikely to be relevant to these other premises and it may be confidential to only your practice. You can also click to download an attached file or delete it from the requirement. Once you have uploaded all the required documents, Scroll all the way up to the top of the page and click the event is ready for pre-inspection review button. You will need to do this for all premises in your practice group. Your assessor will now review your documents in advance of your assessment. They may leave you some pre-inspection feedback and or flag requirements to be addressed at your assessment. You should only take action in response to these comments if your assessor specifically asks you to. Don't forget that your assessor will only be able to review your documents and write your report following the assessment if you have clicked the event is ready for pre-inspection review button. So that covers everything you need to complete in the pre-inspection stage of your practice standards assessment. Please watch our next video guide on the post-inspection stage to find out what you need to do once your assessment has been carried out. Thank you for watching.